This time in the Quick Speed Shop, I'm going to show you how to change a radiator on an old body style 1992 to 1997 Ford F Series truck. Alright, so this is Project Green Machine here. This is my 1995 Ford F250. We got a 5.8 liter V8. We got a, a ZF5 speed in this thing. It's long box, standard cab, three quarter ton. And I just, uh, if you watch the other videos I got on this Project Green Machine, I'll put a link up here for the, the build series. This was a a wreck truck that I rebuilt and I used some used parts and some new parts. One of the things I used that was used was a radiator I had out of one of my parts trucks. And unfortunately it sprung a leak on the tanks so I had to buy a brand new radiator put in this thing. So we're going to tear this old one out and put the new one in and hopefully it'll solve only leak issues. So the first thing I got to do is drain the coolant. I'll get out my coolant drain pan. There's a drain cock on the passenger side at the bottom. I'll uh, show you on the new radiator where that is in a couple minutes. But I'm going to drain the fluid out of the radiator, get that drained down. Then we're going to remove this plastic uh, air intake system here. There's a fan shroud which has two 8mm headed screws or bolts that come out of the top here. The fan shroud will go back. And then there's two 10mm headed screws that hold the top of the tank. And then the radiator can come right out. This is a standard shift truck, like I said, so there's no coolant lines to detach on the radiator. But I'll show you on the new radiator where they do attach if you have an automatic transmission in your truck. And uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's like literally about four to six bolts to take this thing out of here. And it's uh, plenty of room and it's easy to get to. So not a big trick. You can do this at home, but right now I've got to put the new radiator in. Project Green Machine F-250. And look, I'm a YouTube professional now. I got the rubber gloves on. Bam! Okay, on the drain plug on the radiator, I've got a 3 8 piece of rubber hose stuck on it. It's going down in my drain pan. I removed the radiator cap to help it circle around through there. Make sure it's still going in. Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to take some side cutters, and I'm going to go and remove the plastic buttons for Christmas tree, whatever you want to call these, if I can get under it to hold this air cleaner air intake down. Get up under here my screwdriver. You can grab these with the side cutters. Don't squeeze them all the way through because you'll cut them. You can pull them out with the side cutter action. Pull those out. And then you can just unclip this air intake from the, uh, where is it? From the bottom of the air box, get that right out of the way. It's just got a little plastic clip action here that holds it in. Get this out of the way. Now, up top here, there's a couple of eight millimeter screws that holds the fan shroud. I'm just gonna remove those now, and then the fan shroud sits down in some clips on the bottom of the radiator to hold the other end of it. those bolts out the radiator the fan shroud will fall away from the radiator and you can unclip it there's some steel clips down the back and unclip it from there and push it back that'll give you free access to the radiator this is still draining out nicely here's the upper radiator hose if you're going to go ahead and replace a radiator or a water neck or anything like that um, you always want to probably replace your upper radiator hose and a lower radiator hose while you're working on it. These are new hoses though, I just worked on this truck recently, so I'm not going to replace these, just going to do the radiator. So it's, it's got a hose clamp action here. Might have a little trouble breaking the seal depending on how sticky the rubber is. I thought this would come right off here because I just had it off here. not three or four weeks ago but it's stuck on there good there we go oh. a little bit cool in the hose I'll tuck this uh, upper hose here to hold the coolant there and once the radiator drains down here I can take the lower hose off which is on the driver's side and then uh, like I said there's no transmission lines but when I pull this radiator out this came out of an automatic truck I'll show you what I did hope you can hear it you can hear the air draining down as it's draining the system down. 
You can remove this upper hose. This goes to the overflow tank. Keep it tucked up out of the way because it will drain out if you leave it down low. And you can also see here I added a, a piece of rubber. I've added this stub piece here. Um, I'll show you in the new radiator in, in a minute. This extra nipple. Um, some of these trucks had a line that came off this and ran across here and ran to the throttle body. Um, this truck doesn't have that, so I just, uh, the truck that this radiator came out of did, so I just made a simple short piece of hose with a bolt hose clamped in here and that secured that and plugged it off. See the lower uh, lower hose outlet here by my finger. I pulled the hose off there and this is where the training lines will attach. I don't need to remove those. So both hoses are off. The radiator's drained down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove these uh, two 10 millimeter bolts that screw into the core support and the radiator will be free to lift right out of here. Just be aware that you know things drain to a certain level and when you tip it to get it out of here you might lose some more coolant so just be prepared for a little bit of mess on the ground but this thing is free and it should just pull right up out of the rubber isolators and come right out Look at that. bam there it is as you might be able to see by my nomenclature here this is out of my old 1997 f-250 parts truck and uh, this radiator's got about 260,000 miles on it. Oh, I didn't realize it's got a little gink down there in it. But this, this tank, the seam is leaking. It's wet down here, and it was leaking up around here on the top. So this is uh, probably shot. You can see over here where the transmission lines would attach. I just cut them off and uh, kinked them over and taped them up just so I wouldn't cut myself. But that's where your automatic transmission lines would attach. And uh, this guy's done. There's not really any fix in these once it starts leaking. There's a rubber seal on the plastic tank, but there's no sense fixing this. So, Also, you can notice these metal tabs here. This is what the fan shroud clips into, and the new radiator comes in new clips. And I've already moved the uh, two uh, speed nut clips that go up here to attach the upper part of the fan shroud. They simply look like this, and they were clipped on over here, and that's what the fan shroud bolted into. So I've already moved those, so this guy is pretty much out of here. Let's get the new one, and we'll put it in the truck. Here's a radiator I bought on Rock Auto. It's a two-row, heavy-duty one. Hopefully I see there's a hole here. Hopefully there's not any damage to it, because that's going to suck. Here's to be the problem here. Yeah. Look at this. And it comes with a whole bag of brass fittings. Nice. All right, so this radiator is a two-row aluminum cross-flow radiator, uh, which this truck has. Here's your drain cock down here. And then these two ports here, this is for the transmission cooler. My truck's standard shift, so I don't have uh, transmission lines, but most all the automatic trucks will have uh, steel lines that thread into these brass fittings, and then there's a cooler passage in here which cools the transmission fluid. You also notice this uh, rubber uh, hose clamped on stopper here. Some of the Ford trucks have a separate coolant pipe that runs across the top of the core support and this is the uh, to the overflow tank but they have a separate coolant line that feeds the, thr the uh, throttle body. My truck doesn't have that so I'll be leaving this rubber cap in place um, but it looks like it's in good shape. So it's like $105. It's aluminum two row with plastic tanks wedged on here. So hopefully it's gonna be all right. So let's go out in the dark and we'll slap this in the truck. All right, here we go. I put my new clips on the bottom of the radiator. And it's just gonna simply slip right back down here in place of the other one. The 
feet just go and they, they insert themselves into the rubber feet in the core support and then put the two 10 millimeter bolts back into it up here and put the hoses on and fill up the antifreeze, that's about it. All right, that's pretty much it. I've got everything bolted back in just like we took it out. I got everything reconnected, including my air hose. What I have done, you can see it with a slight. What I have done here is I've removed the small hose off the top of the throttle body. I'm going to use this as an air bleed as I fill this coolant system up. I'm going to listen and when that or watch, and what this starts to get some coolant come out of it, I'll stick this hose back on the throttle body, and that'll help push the air up out of the system because this is one of the highest points. It's higher than the heater core and all that. It'll help, help the system not get air bound. And one more thing, if you can get one of these, these are pretty cool for uh, filling up a radiator. It's got a radiator cap uh, connection that screws right down tight on the radiator. And it's got this little stopper that you pull out. So you can put the coolant in here. You can actually run the engine with coolant in this when it, and let the thermostat open and it'll suck the coolant level down. And then if you put too much in, you can stick the stopper in and take this off without spilling any. It's a lot handier and, and uh, more forgiving than a funnel, doesn't tip over and it's uh, it's pretty handy. So let's get the coolant out and we'll fill her back up and then that should be the end of the, this uh, radiator installation on this old body style Ford F-250. I've made sure all my hoses are tight, my drain plug is tight. I'm reusing the coolant because this coolant's only about a month old but if you're doing this on an older truck you don't want to go ahead and put new coolant in your new radiator. It's always a good idea because the stuff doesn't last forever. This is a regular green antifreeze 50-50 mix. So, as I'm filling this, I'm going to be looking for leaks. Make sure I get no leak in action at my hoses or the new radiator itself. Everything's looking good so far, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling. Watching for the uh, throttle body to not get too full and uh, come spilling out the hose. forget to hook your overflow tank back up. All right, the air is coming out here and it's also going to be filling up this hose. Oh, oh, there we go. Holy crap, right there, I called it. So it just pushed all the air out of the engine through this upper throttle body hose. Good thing I was paying attention, that could have been me messy. Bam, so I put the factory clamp back on there. So the system is all filled back up. The only thing I'm going to do um, it's kind of late at night now, so in the morning when I can see more, I'm going to run the truck, let it warm up the temperature, I have the thermostat open up and suck the level down, and then I can uh, evaluate if I need to fill any in the radiator or put any in the overflow tanker and all that. But this is pretty much a pretty easy job. It took me literally less than half an hour to do this with the start to finish, and then I'll just have a couple more minutes in the morning to adjust the coolant level. But real simple job on these trucks are really easy to work on. So that's it. How to replace a radiator out of 1992 to 1997 old body style Ford F-Series truck. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. And as always, we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop for more Ford truck repairs, hot rod builds, rusty junk, whatever else I'm working on here at the Quick Speed Shop.